and you're going to pop out the center. The point comes out. So you have an opening like that. Now I've made these anywhere from about three and a half inches up to about eight inches in diameter. Okay, so what it is is a cube. That's all it is, nothing exotic. And this is friction turning. So basically what we're using is, we're not tying into anything hard, we're just relying upon friction to hold this thing together. And make sure you're mounted well, <clears throat> particularly in the uh, in this center here, because this has a very sharp point to it, and if you don't get it centered, it will bite in, and this will start rocking after a while. You have to be good and tight on this, because again, we're relying upon friction to actually turn this. Remember, there's a lot of flying corners here, so just be careful when you do this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to locate where I'm going to put my uh, chuck. What I do is I know from doing enough of these that I'm from the I'm an inch and three eighths from the end of the center, and that's where I'm going to put the chuck. So that's going to be my first turn right there. What are you using to measure? I never saw that device. This device? This Hold. is this is archaic. <laughs> <laughs> What strange device are you using? <laughs> oh, so old folk use those. There's no old folk here, is there? <laughs> yep. And I just thought you were happy to see me. <laughs> you have to test this and make sure that your uh, tool rest is in the right spot for this. Okay. Even though I'm going to use carbide tools, I'm most comfortable with that. You can use conventional tools. Speed. You have a lot of air you're turning. You're not going to have any success if you try to turn this at six or seven hundred RPM. I'm going to be turning this about fifteen hundred RPM. I'm going to check. What I've done is I've taken the calipers, and I've taken my chuck, and I've opened the chuck up ever so slightly. You get the best, the best grab on this when the chuck is completely closed. So I've opened it up at just slightly, I've measured, and I'm going to check here periodically until I get my right diameter. Yes, you can at times use this while it's turning. I don't do it with this. tighten this because I felt it when I slowed it down I felt that this turned a little bit so I'm just going to tighten up a little bit more the hem on this time I'm going to change tools what you want is a good, clean, crisp corner. I've seen a lot of corners that I call dirty corners. You can't use a dirty corner. You have a good. You need to have a good, clean corner for your chuck to properly hold.
And the carbide tool, remember, a lot of these carbide tools have a radius to it. So you will not get a very tight corner. That's why I went to a harding tool. Okay, at this point, this is where I'm going to start turning from. I've got my shoulder all set up for the, uh, for the chuck. I know exactly where I'm going to be parting this, and now I'm going to start turning this down. Remember, I'm turning from here to this corner here, not this corner. This corner is going to go away. Do it again, Jay. So I'm going to turn from this point here to this corner here, not this corner. This corner is going to go away. It's going to disappear. It's going to be on the floor. Thanks. <clears throat> <clears throat> Literally? <laughs> Now what I'm doing is I'm not watching where the tool is, I'm watching at the top. Once I get my tool positioned, then my eyes go to the top so I can see what the shape is starting to look like and what I'm taking off. position a little bit back and I did prior and I felt the machine start to lug and if you notice the piece the work piece started to slow down ever so slightly the machine was turning. So I'm gonna take off a little bit less this time. They're starting to take shape. What kind of chuck do you have in the head spot? No chuck at all. Nothing? Nothing. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Watch this. The corner is just in the hollow. Right. That's why it's friction turning. It's not going anywhere because <laughs> you've got a corner into the wood inside that hollow. <laughs> Check out her face. Yeah, let's see that face again. <laughs> That'll be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>
Now it gets a little tricky because I'm starting to come off the end a little bit. And you can see it's starting to get round over here. Okay, you get a little chip out, don't worry about it, it's very easy to clean up on the sander, either this sander or the belt sander. I would not suggest you use uh, the 20 inch sander, it's a little bit too aggressive for this. And before you know it, this will become a nub. I stop quite often to check where, where, what it looks like and to adjust the tool rest as needed. Table convex. Pretty close, huh? Yeah, pretty close. <clears throat> A little bit more. I still have a few little flats there. Remember, you're doing on this, you're doing face grain, side grain, and end grain. All the grains here. Whole grain. Whole grain. A little bit more. 
I don't know if you know this, but I'm using the tool rest with my finger to guide the tool. I assume see too many people hold out here and they're trying to guide the tool. You need that tool rest. That's one of the reasons that they put this lip over here so you've got some place to put your fingers. So keep that in mind whenever you turn. Don't try to stand out here and hold your tool. Around you, you hear the noise stopping, the chatter stops. this edge up just a little bit. sander I'll get rid of that nub. Okay I'm not going to do it now because I don't have access to the sander but that's what I would do. Next part. Maybe we did before, we're going to make sure that this is locked in properly and you can see the old marks from where it was in the headstock, a little bit different over here. I know I'm centered and I'm hard up against the uh, chuck and you know where we want to be on the chuck, we want to be on the top of the uh, jaws, not on the bottom. careful of this corner right here. So if you don't know where it is, if you can't position it, if your eyes won't allow you to position it, we're going to put a piece of tape on the tool rest and that will tell you where it is. Not red tape? 
If we had red tape, I would use red tape. Blue it tape. might be red in a minute. <laughs> gauze. Use gauze tape. <laughs> okay, and we're going to start digging out the inside. By the way, if your tool rest is not in the right position, don't just say, ah, it's okay, I'll go ahead and do it anyway. Adjust your tool rest till it's right. Spend the extra few moments just to make sure it's right. What are you referring to? Who are you referring to? Not you. Tool. I'm going to start taking out the inside. Let's take a look at that. The hauling tool. Just want to make sure we can see it. Okay. stay away from that and that's what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make myself a little cut so I know where my inside that's is going exactly to be. What I was thinking you could have made it if you wanted to make it a quarter of an inch thick or a half inch mm -hmm. you're gonna move it to the right. Correct. Okay. It's just going to tell me what my wall thickness is going to be. So why do you select that thickness for a wall thickness? Just, I, I don't like to go too thin on certain things. Certain things I have, I've done a couple where I've actually sanded through the wall. Okay. That's how thin, but this one I like to do thick. Okay. I just think the proportion looks better.
team with even less than that. At most, the valuation is at most. Yeah. Now at this point I would continue going, but I'm going to move about the, through the magic of television. We're going to do something here. Okay, so we're going to remove this. We're going to back up here, break it off, and you will continue working till the inside is done. Okay. Behind you, underneath the uh, this is through the magic of television. We've gotten this ready. Okay, now I'm going to use a vacuum chuck to do the bottom of this. Okay, what I do is I like to finish it before I put on vacuum chuck. Remember, wood is porous, and you want that vacuum chuck to hold as well as possible. So I always put finish on before I use the vacuum chuck. This way, I get the best bite to it. And this is how you can use the chuck. We have one for this lathe, and we also have the setup for the uh, Powermatic lathes as well. There's a little O-ring here, and it's important to get that O-ring seated. You don't have to kill it, you just have to make it snug. After that, there's a gasket. There's a one size gasket for this, and one size for the other lathes. There's a shoulder on the headstock, so make sure you have that gasket on the shoulder. On there. I will find that. Yeah, the metal <laughs> make it noisy. It's noisy anyway, but. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. I don't want to lose this point. I want to put it in. I don't want us to accidentally vacuum it up. No, it never happened. Yeah, famous last words. Okay. By the way, I put embellishment on this one. You could have done the same thing there, and that is make a cut and use the wires to put embellishment. At this point, we're using this as a jam chuck, even though it's set up as a vacuum chuck because we have something on the back. Okay? So this would be set up as a jam chuck. Releasing the chuck, I just don't pull it off, pull the tailstock out and let it hang there because the weight will rotate it on the, uh, on the vacuum chuck. Notice the bottom, that's why I sanded that bottom clean. I use this with the uh, live center and that will give me a center. I'm going to 
going to turn the speed down before I start. When I use the vacuum chuck, I don't go above a thousand RPM when I have a tail stop. I don't know why, it just seems like the right amount, the right speed. And then the only nibbling with this. Not being aggressive at all, I'm just taking off a little bit each time. 